This is the 19th season of Bass Talk Live. BTL is presented by Bass Cat Boats, Strike King Lures, Aftco, Pro Guide Batteries, X Zone Lures, Shoreline Boat and RV Repair, Spro, Gamakatsu, Big Bite Baits, The Bass Tank, Denali Rods, Beatdown Outdoors, and Sunline. BTL, coming at you. Good morning and welcome to another exciting edition of BTL Bass Talk Live, where we are going to talk about bass fishing. A couple weeks ago, we had the Elite Series Angler of the Year leader in Kyle Welcher on the show. I figured it'd only be fair to have the BPT AOY leader. Now he's he's got less of a climb than uh, than Welcher because there's only two derbies left in the BPT season. Both of them uh, up north, kicking things off next week with uh, Lake St. Clair, and that is none other than Ott Defo from tennessee and odd is going to jump on now he's got to take care of some business handle some business this will be a multi-part <laughs> interview first part in the shop getting ready for st Clair. second part in the car yep, yep. thanks in for jumping car. on odd i appreciate it yeah absolutely man glad to glad to be on here yeah second part will be in the car taking uh lizzie to a, a friend for a play date today so <laughs> okay no, <laughs> nothing wrong with that part. uh yeah I said, I wanted to get you on. You're leading the BPT angler of the year. And in our, we actually had a, like at least a five minute long pre-production meeting before this, was on, which is a rarity for BTL. I'm not going to lie. And (laughs) you, you hit me with a stat that I was unaware of three second place finishes in angler of the years, Mm -hmm. twice on the BPT once on the elite series. Yeah. I knew you had done it once, but three that's, that's good. That's good. I mean, that's good. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's good. It's it's just shy of greatness, um, but it but it is good. Yeah, it uh, it, my second year, my so my rookie year on the Elite Series, I finished mm-hmm. fourth, I think, and won Rookie of the Year. And then my my second year, 2012, um, Brent Chapman won, and I came in second to him by about a dozen points, I believe. It, it was it was under 20, um, and then uh, and then yeah, coming second to Jordan Lee on the BPT the year we had the I guess the 2020 year when we had kind of the abbreviated um, yeah and uh, I only had five tournaments um, and uh, and Jordan won that year and I came in second and then came in second to Wheeler the following year in 21 um, so yeah back to back seconds there. Uh, all right, you've got a 28 point lead right now over Dakota Eber and Matt Becker. Uh, is in third, which if you want to talk about uh, a great uh, showing for the invitational anglers that have moved mm-hmm. up over the past couple years, just take a look yep. at second and third in the angler yep. of the year race here in Dakota Eber and Matt Becker. Mm-hmm. Uh, but how much is that on your mind heading into these last two events to get that AOY under your belt? I mean, it's got to be something that you want, Ott. Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely is. You know, um, and and I think my kids, especially Parker, you know, he's like, he, he really wants me to win it because he, uh, he's like, you know, dad, you've won a classic, you've you've won regular tournaments, Mm -hmm. you know, he's like, you've you've never won the points, you know, in anything, you never won a a A O Y. So he, he is definitely aware of it and keeps me aware of it, (laughs) um, you know, but but that's, and you look at those guys and and Dakota, especially, you know, I, I don't know Matt as well. And, don't know Dakota great, but um, he he doesn't miss much when we go up north on smallmouth tournaments. He, I think you'd have to dig back a ways to find one he missed a top ten in, whether that's Champlain or that St. Clair or St. Lawrence or wherever. When you go up north for smallmouth, you just count on Dakota Ebear being in the top ten, you know. So looking at I, 28 points or whatever, I don't consider that any of a lead with two whole tournaments left you know, and, and 80 points up for grabs in each one. Um, you know, I, I think anything less than a, than the top 10 
Dakota for sure is going to pass me. You know, I mean, he's going to make up ground in both tournaments on me because I just fully expect him to, to be in the top five, to be quite honest. Has it surprised you on how he just burst onto the scene on the BPT and what he's done? I mean, you had a you were rookie of the year on the uh, Elite Series, but I mean, you had been on the FLW Tour before. You've been doing this since you were, what, 19? Was that your rookie year? 18, 19? yeah. Yeah, I mean, I started fishing Toyotas when I was 18, and then I think I was 21 the first year I fished the FLW Tour, um, and then uh, and fished there for four years before I came to the Elite Series. Um, but uh, but I, I mean, he he has the thing with Dakota, and and you learn it when you talk to him at all, um, and not that a lot of people don't do this, but I mean, when he got in, and and you were telling me some of his stats, which are which are crazy, it's insane. And, I mean, he, he, when he jumped in, dude, I mean, he jumped in head first, you know, I mean, fishing, you know, multiple divisions of Toyotas, you know, along with the pro circuit and, and everything else at that point in time when he, when he got started. So, I mean, he, you know, there was a, when I was at FLW, the most tournaments I ever fished in a year and I only did this one, um, I fished all the FLW tour, all of the FLW series a division and a half of Toya of Everstarts, the inner strength series, whatever they were. Um, so like six of those, a couple of the Forcewood cup and strength series championship and three or four PAAs or something that year. I fish like 20, you know, upper teens or 18, 19, 20, somewhere in that range, you know, for events that year, which was crazy, but that's, mm-hmm that's what you need to do. And he's done that for multiple years, it seems, you know, so that's a, you you get a crash course. So yes, it looks quick over time, but, but your seasoning, you know, you get seasoned pretty quick that way. Were you doing all that? Like married with a kid too? That was, yes. That, so that one kid, yeah. We we only had Abby at that point in time. Still, Uh, I mean, that's insane. Yeah. Yeah. That was the 2000, nine season 2008 i fished in, like 2007 was my first, first year on uh-oh we lost ott that means ott got a call i forgot to tell ott to put uh yeah there you go you're back i forgot okay. to tell you to put it in standby mode go ahead okay i'm um, looking at yeah, 2008 so, right here yeah so 2008 i fished a good many 2009 was the year i fished so Everything. much stuff um and 2010 i actually pulled back just a little bit um i didn't fish any toyotas but i fished the bass opens that year um along with flw tour but uh yeah 2009 was the year i fished anything i could get in and that particular year back back then we just had abby and we camped everywhere so i would pull a camper jenny would pull the boat we spent eight weeks straight on the road up north like between the Forestwood Cup in Pittsburgh mm-hmm. and Champlain for Toyota or I mean like we did we spent two months in the in the northeast basically the whole summer. It was, you know it, it was a cool cool yeah. time. Volunteer division of the BFL. Southeast yep. division. Two events that two events in the Toyota Series Northern Division, the Toyota Series Championship four events in the pro circuit Eastern division, six events in the pro circuit and the title. That was a, yeah. that was a year. Yeah. And, and that, and also fish, of course it's not on there. The PAA at that point in time, there okay. were three or four of those, um, that year. So, uh, so yeah, I had three or four PAA tournaments on that too. I remember that you fished all of those. Yeah. Did you fish the Not one that Kennedy brought in that fi- uh, fish that had the duck sticking out of its throat? No, so that, I fished some of the early ones. That was that was a couple of the later ones. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I did not fish that one. I remember t- hearing about it, but no, I did not fish that one. Wow. Uh, have you ever experienced burnout? You talk about all those number of events and, and all that. I mean, you've been doing this since, like I said, you were a teenager. Do you ever... You ever get to a point where you just kind of put it on cruise control or at your level do you always wish that you had another event the next week uh, no most of the time i'm glad when it's over but when it's like the prep work which is kind of what i'm you know i'm doing right now um that part of it is i guess that's the most boring part um but i don't fish 
so much anymore, like around home. Like, I, I mean, used to, I mean, back in that time, I would mm -hmm. fish two to four days around home, you know, just to go fishing or whatever. Um, and I don't do that quite as much anymore for sure. Um, but when it comes time, when I get ready to go to tournament, like I'm, I'm excited to go, you know, like I'm, I'm ready to get to the next tournament, ready to, uh, ready to go again. But, but I think fishing a little less at home probably helps with that some. And, and two, the, the flip side of that is outside of the spring of the year, you know, I'm in February, March, April around here is pretty good fishing. Um, but once you get to a little bit later in the year, it's like, unless you just hit something right. I mean, if I'm going to go, I'm going to go out here on the river behind the house because like on Sunday, Father's Day afternoon, we floated down uh, about five miles and between the five of us, we caught a hundred, um, you know, so it's, if, if I'm going to go fun fishing, we'll, we'll go out here, mm -hmm. you know, so, but because most of the other places where we're going to go have a tournament are way better fishing than it is around here. So it's like, yeah. I want to beat my head against the wall around here to go and, or do I want to go really catch it when I go? Uh, like I said, I know you, you, you got to take your daughter somewhere, but can you give us a quick little glimpse? I see a bunch of raffle baits in the background, anything that you're maybe yeah. getting ready before we, before we get on the road, you don't get an opportunity to be in the shop very often here. Okay. Yeah. That's well, a lot of, a lot of spinning poles. I yeah, I've got the spinning poles ready. I've, I've been working. Uh, you can see my off of you set up right there how uh, big is that is that a secret that these northern guys are doing and not saying anything about I, I i mean i have not talked about it a lot on the show but i feel like i've yeah. talked to some guys who let it slip and then they're like don't say yeah. don't say anything about that no it, it definitely is a player you know with the, with the clear water that that those places up there have it's it's definitely more of a player in that part of the country than it is Generally speaking, in the south, my hat looks really crooked. It does. Way. It's a little wonky, I a little don't know crooked. What, what's going on? Is that does it feel weird on the? No, go, it really go the other feel way. Feel weird is what's funny. I think maybe I'm just holding the phone. No, back. it looks it looks wonky. I noticed it. I thought I thought, boy, that yeah. has to feel awkward on the head. There you go. That's a lot better right there. And to, and see that feels really weird, but we're going to stay with that. Um, <clears throat> but uh no it it definitely is more more of a player up there just given mm -hmm. you know the water visibility and that kind of stuff but a, a crazy thing with this tournament coming up on saint Clair, so the canadian bass season opens on saturday we practice thursday friday okay you cannot target bass in until canada saturday. until saturday in the tournament so any any scouting we do in Canadian waters, we cannot have a rod out on the deck of the boat. All so, camera scouting. All camera scouting. So I'm, I'm like, I mean, I always make sure that I've got that stuff, you know, ready mm -hmm. to go. But this is going to be a tournament where it legitimately is going to be how you practice. I mean, imaging, you know, live scoping or, or cameras, you know, is, is going to be how you have to practice in Canada, you know. So, um, yeah, that that's going to be a – that's going to be a neat part of it. And I actually rigged me up a way, way to put me a hummingbird live right here at the console at the real blazer. Well, that's what's in that bag. Right there. Oh, so, uh, you're blazer. sponsored by that company that does like the line spools and stuff. Don't you have like yeah. the line spool? Can you show that? Cause yeah. I was, I honestly am about to order one of those for my leader line and stuff. This is not planned. So, and then I know you yeah. got to get get on the road. We'll take a break, and then we'll come back and we'll catch up with you in the car because I want to talk about some different okay. techniques that are going on right now. Yeah, so right, I mean, right there on the yes, lid. Yes, that's it, right there. That deal up. Hold on, let me go Dude, big screen is... on this real quick because this is a yeah. this is this is okay. This is an example of a professional angler that is sponsored by a company that I am aware of because of their sponsorship <laughs> of the profession. Like, I'm serious. That's the only reason awesome. I know about this. Yeah. No, that's that's good. So it, it's got a little, it's got a little tension knob right there. So when I'm when it's in travel mode, I, I lock that deal down pretty good, so that the spool's good and tight. But then when you go to use it, just spin that back some, pull your line out, tie your leader on, you know, and you're good to go. It's got that little deal there that your line goes under. So it, so it traps it the line to keep it from being all all over the boat. Yeah. Oh man, from unwinding on itself and, and just, you know, and tighten that knob back up so that the spool doesn't spin. 
And I mean, those, I, I truly have not touched those, the 12 hour drive home from New York. Um, and they rolled, rode like that and didn't make a mess in the boat or anything. You just, you tighten that knob up a little bit, put the line under the flap and you're, you're good. And those go. are like fairly reasonable priced. Too. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They what is it called again? If people want to look that up. Yeah. That's another little Ray, rail, rail, blazer? rail, rail blazer. Right, there you go. There you go. Yeah. The other thing is yeah. uh, uh, Matt Lee, sponsored by a company that's just getting into the fishing and boating industry too, and they're trying mm -hmm. to do a good job of that. Here it is, right here. Hold on. Yeah. Let me let me pr pull this up, and then we'll take a break. When we come back, we're going to okay. talk about we're going to talk about minnow baits. Uh, I yeah. had a, I'm I'm intrigued with the fact that the less a bait does, the more effective it it seems to be now. Become that way. That's it, right there, right. Rail blazer. There you go. That's that's the company. That's them. And right then, there you go. The line spooling station. So that fit. Which one is it? This one, the spooling station track mount, or the fixed or stone so, mount? Either one. Like you can. Uh, the yeah, do that one. If you click on that one, um, it can. Uh, so you see, right? You know, you can just hard mount it with okay. those two bolt holes back there. Uh, but yeah, and then so all their stuff has has the ability to. There, they have a what's called a star port, and you can you can plug and play, you know, put all different kinds of stuff in it. So that's good stuff. All right, we're gonna take our first break. I gotta quit saying that yeah. too. I say that that's good stuff. I got a message that someone was like, "Dude, oh, you always say that's good stuff, and then you always say, well, 'Am I stuff, right? Am stuff. I right? Am I wrong? Am I right?'" <laughs> They're like, "Dude, like, I just seek validation the entire duration yeah. of the show, apparently." I, I, one thing I say a lot that JD made me aware of because he edits all our videos is I'll say whenever, whenever is my thing. Yeah. Better than whatever. <laughs> 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 but whenever we come back from the first break, we'll talk about some more good stuff. Sounds good. Uh, it is uh, BTL on a Tuesday with Ot Defo. We'll be back in about three minutes, four minutes right after this. See ya. Yeah. The new Puma STS has been redesigned from the ground up. With the angler, design, function, and performance in mind, nothing on this new offering was compromised, and the only thing carried over from the previous version is the name. Based on the soft touch series hull that started with the flagship Jaguar, this new model is nimble and performs incredibly well at all speeds with either a 250 or 300 horsepower engine. Featuring a new 96 inch wide body footprint, this hull measures out at 20 foot 7 inches in length. Industry-leading design coupled with tournament-winning performance. The Puma STS from Bass Cat. Feel the rush. Everything you need. One legendary brand. Top one on Strike King. You know, a lunker, a two sandwich eating kind of man. And on behalf of all of those bigger, I gotta say it once and for all, it's bad enough that the fish look smaller in our hands. The last thing we should have to worry about is getting quality outdoor clothing that fits. Avco, any fish, any water. Elite Series Pro, Daryl Gleason here. My Pro Guide batteries keep me going on those long tournament days and long practice days. Always plenty of juice, never fail. The best part about Pro Guide batteries, it's the people behind the company. They have over 40 years experience in the battery business, keeping all of us fishermen out on the water longer, catching more fish. Check them out at ProGuideBatteries.com. What's up, Bass Talk Live fans? Brandon Polinick here. And ever since I won a couple Bassmaster Elite Series events on X-Zone Lures, I've been getting a bunch of questions of what makes them so special and different. And really, the truth is, it's in the details. The little details, things like no cheap fillers in their plastic, that gives you more lifelike action, more realistic and vibrant colors. But don't just take my word for it. Go to www.xzonelures.com and check them out for yourself. The great thing about the new Sensation Soft Plastic from Big Bite Baits, heavily scented, 
super soft, buoyant, comes in seven great new shapes. I've got a couple of them of my signature series, the cliffhanger worm and the ram tail craw. Great for a flipping jig, football jig, swim jig, all that. Several other great shapes. Really excited about it. We've worked over the last year. Catches fish all over the country and I think it's going to catch fish for people everywhere you try it. The Spro Little John crankbait has been around for almost 15 years and it is one of my go-to crankbaits whenever I need a fish in the boat so you can never have enough new colors. That's why Spro is coming out with a handful of new colors including Pearl Shad which has this bleached out white look but it's got this pearlescent really really pretty. We've got Copper Shad which looks amazing in the water. It's got that purple flake on the back really really pops in the water. And then if you want some real pop, we've got Sparkle Shad, nothing but sparkles all over this thing. And then last but not least, we've got the Matte Sexy Shad, just a really different looking color for a crankbait. So you wanna give them a little different look, that Matte Sexy Shad is definitely the one to go with. All these colors are available in the original Little John and the MD. All right, welcome back, BTL on a Tuesday with Odd Defo. I've been watching him do a backstage travel like across the yard through somewhere else inside. He's he's on, you're on an Odyssey somewhere. Odd, is that a picture yep, of a cow? It is. That's a Jenny really likes cow pictures. She where we live, she can't actually have any cows, so she has lots of. Cow oh my pictures. gosh, the entire the entire house is is dairy cowed out. Yeah, the laundry laundry room is full of cows. And then, and then was there a, there was a there's a puppy that is uh, colored like both puppies are colored like cows. Yeah, yeah, he's a they're both Australian shepherds. He's a blue merle and she's a uh, black tri. That's what. Okay. Uh, 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 it occurred to me that I, that I have been very uh, influenced by mar marketing over. I was at Sam's yesterday and I wanted to take this. So this is a new energy drink. Another thing, not sponsored by nothing. It's called Z Zoa, Z-O-A, whatever, but it's the Rocks energy drink. And I literally oh. tried it because I knew that he was a big time bass fisherman because of his social yeah. media. And then I tried it and the stuff is good. And then also, I'm on the coffee grinds now. Not, you know, work, work it on that. Oh, and that's yeah. another thing that I saw cinnamon roll flavored so i'm gonna end up with a line spooler my drink of choice and my coffee grinds all because of social media marketing i'm a sucker for that stuff <laughs> you get you just get uh get sucked in that's pretty good yeah there's nothing wrong with that uh before no, the break no, no. i wanted to to uh talk a little bit with you uh about key baits that have played a role this year and i got on this deal yesterday with joey nani who just won the Bassmaster open on uh lake ufala using he calls it a ned Miki. but uh you also look at how gussie won the classic how jacob wheeler won the bpt on gunnersville and it's these minnow style baits are you in on that like what are your thoughts on that yeah it's uh you know that uh, it's it's what we for a long time in East Tennessee called top line. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, which was primarily a wintertime technique. You know, cold water, um, cold water deal is what it was primarily done around here, and didn't do it a lot the rest of the year. Um, with forward facing sonar, being able, you know, I, th I think we don't give fish enough credit to being able to find a bait like we we mm -hmm. want to throw a chatter bait or a square wheel crank bait because we can feel it and because we can feel it we know the fish can feel it kind of thing where uh oh we're gonna lose uh he said that he might have just a little bit of issues with the service and then he would get better because he is in east tennessee uh Wi-Fi. You back? Okay. You're back. And, All right. And, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, so, so we were, we're talking we're, we're about the feel, which is interesting because you said you can yeah. feel the baits, like you can feel a crankbait wiggle, you can feel a chatterbait vibrate. Yeah. So we, if we can feel it, we know the fish can find it. I think is the way our mind works. It's like you know we, we can we can make sense of that that the fish is going to be able to find our bait. But now with forward facing sonar, we're able to know that our bait is within a foot of a fish. 
So, you know, I mean, fish that, that you can, you can target fish with a wacky worm in the middle of the lake mm -hmm. where, I mean, we know how effective a wacky worm is on a fish that we can see and put it on its nose. Well, we can do that in the middle of the lake now, you know, so, so things like a minnow bait, it's a, you know, it's got a jig head on it. We're able to get it down there quick, put it right on the fish and yet it be completely natural. Um, we don't, on our side, we don't have to think, well, the fish isn't ever going to find it because it has no action, has no drawing power. You know, we don't need them to find it because we're going to put it where they are. Do you think this is going to make traditional offerings more obsolete as we continue to get further and further down this road and seeing how versatile these baits are in different conditions? I mean, dude, you have like your own line of, of, of grapple of Craig baits and all that. I mean, there's been tournaments that are now won on this, this forward facing sonar with this minnow that should have, that should have been one cranking a, a DT six. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it definitely is going to go into, uh, going to change stuff. Um, and, and those, I felt like those, you know, traditional baits will get more conditionalized. Um, you know, I mean, when you've got some wind, when you've got some, you, you've got some, clouds or you've got some current or you know you've got those kind of things which are which are also things that especially when it's, mm -hmm. it's going to make a i mean everybody would rather throw a crankbait in the wind than they would on a on a bright day mm -hmm. what's what's i think is interesting is and i never realized it uh what i I never realized it until this spring. I went out crappie fishing on a lake that had maybe an inch and a half of visibility. I mean, one of those lakes where when the bait oh, wow. hits the water, it's it's gone. And I was throwing a Demiki rig for big crappie, forward-facing sonar, yeah. and we caught a 20-pound limit of largemouth. And we'd be dropping down on them, you know, big 12-foot poles, and you'd watch these, what we thought were big crappie, but largemouth, orient, attack and suck in these baits and we're holding them motionless in zero visibility and those suckers had absolutely no problem seeing it like you can go to my instagram and see yeah. it. it's the one we're holding up big crappie and big bass at the same time they're pale there's no color to them but it yeah. was at that moment where i was like man these things can can what do you think they're doing are they seeing it odd are they sensing it are they feeling it with their lateral line yeah i, I think they feel it I, I do personally, um, you know, and I, I'm going, I'm going to assume that, that that was a, a pretty calm day. Very calm glass calm. Yeah. And, and I, and I, I think on days like that, that's when they're just acutely aware of, of their, you know, their, their other senses, not having, you know, been able to use their lateral line and that kind of stuff where I'm, on the other days, they rely a little more maybe on, on vision or, you know, that kind of stuff. But they're, they're so acutely aware and can and can feel all the rest of that stuff so well, you know. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk to you real quick about uh, your year before I let you go. Like I said, you're leading the angler of the year. Two events left. Uh, finishes of, well, you had your worst finish of the season this past week at, or two weeks ago at Cayuga, which was a 23rd place. Uh, three or yeah. four top tens in the others, 10th, second, seventh, and third. Uh, you're, you're accustomed to getting on rolls. We kind of talked about that at the, at the beginning of it. Uh, talk a little bit about your year so far and kind of some of, I mean, has there been like an overall theme of your year? Have you relied on one bait? Have you mixed it up? Is there something, you know, that kind of has, has tied it together to get to the top? Yeah, it, it's been, uh, man, it's been just a good, it really has just been a good run. I don't, I don't know any other way to put it other than stuff has, stuff has happened when I needed it to, you know, and that, it, it's our format, you know, of course it being five fish this year, but not only that, but the way the event shifts now is, is a little bit different, you know, um, in, in some ways, the, the fact that, you know, our knockout day and championship day, are combined um you know and it's there's no win and make it through um on your on your first round you know so you 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 know if you're first or 20th it's all the same so and i've had a, a lot of my uh, you know a lot of my qualifying rounds 
have been just kind of mediocre. You know, I've, I've made it in, yeah. I think I've made a couple in the top 10, but most of them has been 12th or 18th or something. And I've made it low enough in the qualifying a lot of the time where I'm like, man, I just need to go fishing on my knockout day. Or I got just enough figured out to where it's like, okay, you know, uh, this, this is, I, I need to just lock in on this or whatever it may be. So it's been, it's been one of those kind of deals where I've, I've adjusted throughout the event well and uh, and then to be able to, to capitalize on that knockout day because you can, you can make the top 10 on that knockout day or you can finish 40th. And there, mm-hmm. there's obviously a really big difference um, and where you're, where you're going to end up overall, you know, between that. Between I remember when you won your the... rookie of the year on bass, you said you caught one fish deeper than eight feet. I think it was. And the rest came yeah. out. Are you still doing the shallow thing? Are you, is that still something that even in this day and age of technology and dropping on fish and baits, you can still lead this thing fishing in the dirt? Yeah. I mean, I have, you know, what's our, our schedules lined up pretty good for it for the most part, you know, or um, even, even including Red Crest, um, you know, stage one was down in Florida um, on Kissimmee. Obviously that was mm-hmm. going to be a shallow water deal. Um, stage, uh, well, then Red Crest was next and Norman in the spring was a shallow water deal. Uh, stage two was here at Douglas and Cherokee Lakes and some guys called them, um, live scoping and stuff on Cherokee, especially where the, the knockout championship was, but I, I fished up the river, not as far as Keith was, but, but I fished up the river and, uh, you know, and was able to make a top 10 up there. And then, uh, Murray was a shallow water deal, you know, sight fishing and, and herring spawn and stuff. Um, and then Gunnersville was really the first, you know, offshore kind of deal. Um, and, uh, and I, I was How able to, like to in the, in the tournament, to find one really key school of fish that I caught 24 pounds off of that day and 24 pounds the next and then didn't catch anything in the championship, you know, so, um, and then to, uh, to this last one, um, you know, to be able to have a, have a solid finish up there. Okay. You get, and, and again, it was a shallow water deal, you know, I mean, it was a, it was a sight fishing thing. So just our schedule, truthfully, we've had one offshore event, to, to date, you know, now obviously that's about to change with these next two, but um, but our schedule has certainly been a primarily shallow water deal. St. Saint Clair and, and Saginaw. What's the difference between a northern smallmouth and a Tennessee smallmouth, in your opinion? <laughs> everything. Everything? Yeah. Yeah, everything. Um, yeah, it, it, it is 100%. Uh, you know, they're, they're up there generally speaking like you want nice conditions for smallmouth sunny mm-hmm. not much, not a lot of wind a little breeze is okay um and and they're just man they're just different critters um you know for sure i i, I, I assume it's just i mean where they live you know but uh but yeah they're, they're definitely um definitely different from our from our southern smallmouth and and just the places you fish for them are different i mean st Clair has never been a favorite of mine hopefully that'll change after this year but it's been a you know it's pretty pretty big pretty vast and and featureless you know it doesn't have a lot of a lot of breaks or contours or anything like that those fish don't really relate to that they just you know get out there and shift around as the current does and follow the bait um yeah, it's it's definitely it's, its own its own beast. And then you'll have to so you're basically yeah, you look at who's chasing you, you're gonna have to top ten this Saint Clair and Saginaw. As far as I'm concerned, yeah. Um yeah, I mean with D- Dakota especially is And Matt Becker. Becker's good insanely good up there. Becker's really and, good and up Becker's there too. He's a Pennsylvania there, you know, guy. Yeah. From yeah, from Pennsylvania originally. So, um, you know, I, I don't know him as well as I do Dakota, but yeah, they're they're both really really good at those type of fisheries. So, yeah. um, to, to think that both of them could top ten is a is a reality, but um, it, one of them top ten in both of those is is probably likely. So, um, yeah. you know, if I give up anything other than the top ten, I'm going to be losing ground to him. Dude, you got to get to know Becker. He's a good dude, man. He's, he's a okay. really, really good dude. He's got his stuff together. Like, you know, there's some guys that are like, okay, we'll take like a Jeff Crete early 2000s. 
Like you get in his truck and you're like, how did this guy even make it to the event? Like you get in the boat and you know what I mean? And then there's other guys where you're like, dude, this guy, if you touch a drop shot hook, he's going to be like, who was in my tackle? Becker's got his stuff together from the sponsorship side, from the media side, solid human being. I'm a really big fan of Matt Becker. Okay. Yeah. No, I'll definitely have to get to know him. So, yeah. all right, dude, uh, I will let you go. Thank you for jumping on and congratulations on, yeah. well, I guess it's kind of another average year for you because you always seem to be up at the top, man. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's been, no, it's definitely been a good one. This is, you know, to, for this last finish of a 23rd to be my worst of the year. Um, no, it's definitely been a, been a, been a good year. Um, and I, since the streak is over, uh, I could, not that I believe in jinx or anything like that, but I had, you know, we'd had five or, yeah, let's see, we'd had four Bass Pro Tours and Red Crest. So I, I had five events and I had top 10. Um, my first five events of the year. I've never done that before. I, I started with two, I think, is the most mm-hmm. I've ever um, started the year with in the top ten. So uh, yeah, because you were pretty, tenth pretty there. Happy. Yeah, you were tenth at Red Crest. Mm-hmm. Five in a row. Remember yeah. that year Skeet had where it was like seven top tens yeah. or something. It was absolutely insane. And yeah. then I don't think he yeah. won Angler of the Year that year. I think that was the deal where. No. He went to the Alabama the River season. and Kevin beat him, and he went to his spot on day one, and it was loaded with cows. Yeah, I remember covering yeah. that. He was throwing a gunfish, and there were literally cows up to their neck on the entire stretch. Some farmer's cows were in the river where he wanted to fish. Well, I, I, I knew I knew that Kevin won, but I didn't realize that he got hosed by cows. I didn't know that. Yeah, part. no, he was throwing a gunfish around cows and still caught a couple. That's the crazy thing because I was really? following him. I was covering him for bass zone. I've got pictures of him. Well, it's like him fishing like a topwater and cows looking at him like, "What are you doing?" He, I mean, he might should have been flipping in the shade of him. Like it have been, I could have just the utter down, pattern, you know? the utter the- pattern. <laughs> <laughs> work. Uh, All right, Ot. Thank good. you very much. I appreciate it, dude. Yeah. Thanks, man. Good luck. See ya. Let's see you, buddy. Bye. All right. That is Ot Defo. Uh good dude. Very talented. Like I said, he's he's been doing this a long time with a lot of off the water responsibilities. Like it's hard enough to do this. Try to do it on the on the water without, you know, families, young kids, do it all this. And Ot is one of those guys who's been able to juggle it really effectively and really uh makes it look easy so all right we're gonna take our final break of the show when we come back break down what's going on uh the rest of the week and dive into some more statistics it's btl on a tuesday live from shawnee oklahoma we'll be back right after this are you looking to install your own fishing electronics the solution is the bass tank power harness It takes the guesswork out of installation. No more voltage issues or interference. Designed by an engineer so that you can get professional results right there in your own garage. Installation done right with the help of the Bass Tank Power Harness. You can feel confident knowing that your installation was done right. The Bass Tank Power Harness. Give us a call or order yours today at thebasstank.com. Get the best patterns backed by tournament data. Start by finding the best 10% of your lake. Know exactly what to look for and what to throw. After that, you just put them in the boat. Try the Deep Dive app today. Look at that beast right there. Have you considered purchasing new electronics for your rig? The type of mounts you choose to protect your investment should be part of the decision-making process. No matter if you prefer one, two, or three graphs up front, Beatdown Outdoors has a solution for you. Adjustable, versatile, rigid, and made in the USA. What's your ultimate electronic setup? Check out the full selection of Beatdown Outdoors products by visiting beatdownoutdoors.com. Having confidence in your tackle while on the water is one of the main things to success, in my opinion. In the last couple of years with Denali, I've had just that. From anything from spinning rods, casting rods, tungsten products, even now to casting and spinning reels, I have the confidence to go out there and get the job done and know that all my equipment is going to handle it and do it just the way I want it. The thing about Denali is you've got great quality products at a great price point, so make sure you check them out. Shoreline Boat and RV, dock rash, storm damage, collision repair, that deep scratch or gouge from trying to access that secret creek. 
Shoreline Boat and RV can get your prize possession back in mint condition and looking good on the water, fast. All repairs are done in-house, so they're able to get your boat or RV back to brand new, quickly. All Shoreline's work comes with a rock-solid warranty. Find out more at ShorelineBoatAndRV.com. Kansas City, Austin, and Tulsa. I'm the kind of guy that never leaves a house without a pocket knife, and Gamagatsu's come out with the EDC series of knives. EDC stands for everyday carry, so whether you're on the water or off, you can always have it with you. The best thing about it to me is that assisted open feature. With this D2 blade, you've got it right here at your fingertips, so if you can't find your scissors, you need to cut a knot, you need to cut your braid, you've always got it. Make sure you check it out. Never leave home without your Gamagatsu EDC knife. Born in Japan, using technology, innovation, and precision, Sunline produces the widest selection of fishing lines at the most technologically advanced line factory in the world. Manufactured at the strictest tolerances to produce victories at the highest levels of tournament bass fishing, from household names like Christie, Swindle, and Cruz, to young guns like Cook, Logan, New, and Welcher, they all trust Sunline to take them to the top of the leaderboard. Choose the line that will give you the strength to guarantee your confidence. Sunline. All right, welcome back, BTL, on a Tuesday. Big shout-out to Ott Defo for taking the time and opportunity to talk to us. All right, we got a lot of stuff going on in the world of professional bass fishing. Uh, Cayuga was a week and a half ago, and obviously eye-popping numbers there. A lot of, uh, of mid-20s, top-20s bags. But one of the big things that came out about it, and there's other guys that have talked about it, is the catching the same fish twice now they have the rule that that when you're visibly bed fishing i've talked to a couple bpt anglers about this and uh and and i'll i'll make a couple short comments on it having literally covered every single tournament that's taken place since 2008 every once in a while you come across something uh that's new that's novel that that may not break the rules it may not go with the spirit of the rules but it's not illegal and I think that that's why, like, you hear about all the Roland Martin rules and things like that. But but until it be it, it is becomes an issue, you don't know that it's an issue, so you don't have a rule against that issue. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just what it is. It's how the rule book develops. It's why the rule book for the NFL or Major League Baseball or the NHL or anything is there's always additions. I remember uh, like the. Avery rule, like with what he was doing when he started facing uh, Marty Brodeur. And there's just all sorts of, of, of crazy things that come up. And I think that what we saw at Cayuga was something that had not really been thought of and is such a, a niche application where you have uh, small mouth that are on beds that are easily accessible and targetable, and you can catch that fish while you're looking at it. That fish goes back to the bed, and then you can back off to where you can't see it, and then you can proceed to catch that fish again. Now, you're not breaking any rule by doing that because you're not sight fishing for that fish, which the rules say that you can only sight fish for a fish one time each day. So I think that that just brought up, I don't, if you're going to take this, the spirit of the rule it you can take two different camps here you could take the hey that's not what the spirit of the rule is they're just saying you can't just catch the same fish twice in a day or you could say hey it says i'm not looking at it this is 100 percent legal by the book what i was doing do i expect there to be some sort of of rule change going forward yes is this something that is probably only going to play once every couple years once every three four years whenever they have a a a a smallmouth slug fest when those smallmouths are still on the beds because they're easier to catch two, three, four times over the course of the day. They're easier to blind fish. Uh, yes. So I, I look at it. I don't look at it as, Oh, these guys were trying to get away with one or pull one over or cheat. I just look at it as the progression of the sport and something came up in this tournament that, uh, I'm confident MLF will address moving forward, going into the next tournament. Uh, and guys are, Guys are trying to catch as much as much as they can. Uh, and uh, as far as as far as like removing of hooks and all and how that's done, listen, legal, not legal, whatever. You got to lay your head on the pillow at night 
and know that as a competitor at the top level of the sport, representing one of uh, 104 on the Elite Series and 80 on the BPT, that you, every single thing that you do is scrutinized, looked at, in most cases recorded, you have to put your head on the pillow at night and know that everything you did was above board, legal, and that you could be proud of your actions day in and day out on the water. And that's all that comes down to. I mean, you know, if what you did was wrong or what you did was right, regardless of what the tournament rules say. So, like I said, it's potatoes, potatoes there, as far as being able to say. It. Uh, I do want to say I visited, uh, I always talk about uh, Lucky Lure and OKC, great local tackle shop. Uh, if you're in the OKC area, they open one up in Tulsa, Tulsa, Tulsa Tackle and Outdoors. It's a couple hours away from Lucky Lure. Stop by. Great guys up there at Tulsa. Great selection. Uh, a lot of JDM baits up there. Dropped way too much money before the open there. Uh, and then also uh, for all your, your normal stuff, if you need stuff overnight and stuff, don't forget about Omnia. But like I said, when I talked to Omnia, I said, dude, I said, I got to support the local guys. So Tulsa Tackle and Outdoors, great uh, local spot up in Tulsa that I didn't even uh, I didn't even mention uh, mentioned that on the show last week, but I stopped there before the event. I am working with, uh, Ben to get Ben on. I think Ben's maybe on baby watch. Uh, so we're going to try to get Ben on to talk a little bit about his, uh, you follow open where he caught the biggest bash of the tournament, smash him again, finish in the top 20 and move back into contention to qualify for the elite series. So, uh, Good on him. We got four left as we head up north. So uh, we will be back with a new live show tomorrow. Working on a pretty pretty cool guest for that show. And then Thursday uh, live with the man, Frank Scalish, day four, number 118. All right. Big shout out to Ott Defoe, current BPT angler of the year leader. That's all we got for today. We'll talk to everybody tomorrow. See ya.